welcome back to Beauty Within. It's another home edition. It's been a while since we've revisited the topic of gunky, filled, delicious, juicy pores, right? And I know this is something that all of you guys are passionate about, even Rowena and I, because we just can't seem to crack the code on pores, like why it seems like everything that we do, no matter how on point we are with our skincare, how diligent it is, it seems to always just kind of slowly creep back out, taking place on our face, creating things like texture, breakouts, especially now that it's getting a little bit hotter, which means our pores are actually going to be thriving as you can see I've brought on my skincare oh my god I purposely put this in here to entice you guys because I know you guys love products so today I'm gonna break down my personal top favorite ingredients to help with pores and all of these I've tried before so you can rest assured that this really just does come from my personal opinion as well as the research that we've looked into but we'll also just revisit what are pores what is filled inside them and the steps that we can do to really minimize the brain them back in <laughs> and I'll also go through you know how each ingredient plays well with different skin types how often you need to use it and then along the way we'll probably debunk a few myths some you might have heard before but you know some things are just good to reiterate because I think we can all get a little lost along the way so grab your drink grab a friend whatever it is and make sure you've subscribed press the notification bell so you get all the good little notifications of when we upload next and if you're curious to want more content from me more content from Rowena make sure you check out our membership system which is that little join button right next to subscribe and you can join our membership so yes let's recap over pause Okay, so let's recap a little. Let's walk before we run. What are pores? So they're basically little openings that are spread all over our skin, on our bodies, on our face, obviously. But there are two places that we don't, and that is our palms and the soles of our feet because those only have sweat glands and the difference is our pores are actually home to a hair follicle those teeny tiny little hairs that we don't see on our face but are actually everywhere and they're also home to the sebaceous gland which then produces sebum that seeps out through the pores to naturally help nourish and moisturize our skin so even though we tend to hate sebum especially it's more the overproduction of sebum it's actually a very important thing that our bodies produce naturally for us to keep us glowing truly from within and without the need of products so the reason why we want to pick specific products is to help complement that natural process because in our sebum we already have vitamin E there's a lot of other fatty acids that work together to really nourish the skin cells and that's all part of the skin barrier and the acid mantle which has its own pH balance and we really want to keep that tight locked and healthy right and that's why for oily skin people we choose to incorporate products that are a little more lightweight because there's already a more like upped dosage of the sebum that's already helping to nourish our skin whereas dry skin the sebaceous gland won't produce as much sebum there's not as much oil seeping to the surface which is why drier skinned people will tend to look for ingredients that are more nourishing more moisturizing that contain more fatty acids to then kind of like add in to what it's lacking so it's all about playing this balancing game that leads us into the next kind of question we all face why are our pores so big in general people with oilier combination skin will tend to have larger pores if you think of it like a pool that's being filled up with sebum it looks enlarged right because there's actually stuff in there whereas people with dry skin their pores won't look as large because they're not producing as much of that sebum so that's one of the first reasons skin type that might be adding to why some people have large ones to begin with some people have smaller ones another one is obviously genetics we can have dry skin but still be acne prone we're going to get to why this happens potentially in just a second so first step is really understanding the starting point of where we're at so I have sensitive oily skin that's a little bit combination so my pores are the largest around the nose around the cheek and that's about it and then I'll get hormonal acne which is like just around the chin but that doesn't really have much to do with pores other than the fact that during hormones your sebaceous glands are just more active they're triggered and so they'll produce more sebum and that just increases the potential of it getting
mixing, you know, mixing with bacteria, mixing with dead skin to then produce breakouts. So there's a whole lot of different things going on, but for the most part, I think we all just want to kind of deal with this butterfly area of our skin and the T-zone. Okay, so I have four main reasons why we might still have enlarged pores, even if we think that we're doing everything right. The first one is dehydrated skin. We recently found out within the last year or two that one of the biggest reasons for any sort of irritation, any itchiness, any inflammation or large pores is directly related to hydration, you know, especially with oily skin. This is something that I did when I was younger. I felt like, oh my God, I have oily skin, so I have to strip it all away. Therefore, I'll have dry skin. But then what that does is signal to your skin it's off balance. So you're actually telling your skin to produce more oils. Now that's with oily combination skin. With dry skin, you already are starting off with a very dry, barren Sahara land, my friends. It's something that you probably are well familiar with when we get really tight, when we get itchy, when it starts cracking. And this can be the reason for why dry skin people are actually breaking out. It's because you don't have enough oils and so your skin is almost frantically trying to adjust itself to help balance it out for you. And you might not be feeding it the right ingredients, enough hydrating ingredients, enough um, emollient ingredients, to trap all the hydration in there. So that's all happening on the outside. And then coupled with the fact that maybe you're not drinking enough water, even though our skin as an organ, we forget that our skin is an organ, much like our kidneys and everything, it's just on show. So even though our skin is the last place to receive water, we still need to drink a lot of water so that our body can go through its natural process of detox and make sure that toxins, fat, and oxidation of certain foods are running well in the body. So with hydration, I have a cluster of just example products that you can really look for. Um, in terms of toners, I love incorporating deep hydration straight after my cleansing. So I have a couple of toners and serums here. Let's start off with this. This is a cult favorite. Everyone knows how much we love the Fresh Rose Deep Hydration Facial Toner. It's beautiful. It's got real rose petals. It's got hyaluronic acid. It's got the rose water, which has been something that's been used over centuries from people in Greece to people in Japan. It's just one of those like age old ingredients. So what I love about this this one is that it's super hydrating. Rowena loves it for her dry skin. I love it for my um, oily skin. It's not irritating. It doesn't have anything that's going to really resurface. So it's purely there for just packing in the hydration in the most lovely and the most pleasant way possible because it smells like an absolute a rose dream. A recent discovery we found is the Peach and Lily Wild Dew Treatment Essence. And this is the Drench and Rewind. It's got Lotus and Bamboo. Once again, it is packed with hydrating ingredients. And this one has a little bit more viscosity to it. And your skin really does just like, it's quenching the thirst of your skin. I love this. You can use it in the morning, use it at night. Because it is an essence, I feel like when you put it on, the moisture stays locked in there. It's not like one of those toners or those watery serums that kind of just feel like it's dissipated. And because it does kind of trap it in there, when you put it on, it almost feels as though you've already put a serum on. So sometimes when I use this, I'll actually skip the serum step and then just go into my moisturizer. Love, love, love this. So hydrating. So this one is a little bit more watery. If you have dry skin, you could even like double up on these two and whoa, your skin would be laughing, my friend. It would be laughing. Um, this is one for you purely like oily combo skin girls. This is the Paula's Choice Ultra Light Super Antioxidant Concentration Serum. So this is used after a toner. I absolutely love this one because it is so lightweight. You guys know how much we love Paula's Choice. <laughs> Let's be real. This one has a hyaluronic acid as well as other antioxidants. So it's a great one to use in the day and also at night. It's just like a no fuss, no brainer, super hydrating, but it's not thick. It doesn't clog your pores. It's not comedogenic. And that's something that you want to look for, especially if you have oily skin. So this one is especially hydrating while being light as a serum because some serums are a little bit more oilier, but this one is super lightweight. Um, I've used like half of this already. Love it. It's a no brainer day. Another serum that's really 
great for hydration is the Dr. Jot Sika Pear Serum. So this one is more, I feel like, if you're dehydrated, but you also have some redness going on because of the Centella Asiatica that is formulated in here to really help to reduce redness, irritation. And I'm not gonna say that it like completely calms down like all redness. It's not magic. <laughs> Skincare is not magic, but it does really help to give that feeling. It's like a jelly that your skin is Wow, oh my god. Just putting it on my hand reminds me of how delicious this just like soaks into the skin. Oh my goodness. And then if you're looking for something that's hydrating, is also really affordable, we love the Versed Dew Point Moisturizing Gel Cream. And this one has green tea extract as well as aloe vera. One is an antioxidant. One is really great at hydrating the skin naturally because aloe vera is basically completely made up of water. And this is a gel cream consistency. And I would say this is really great for people who have oily skin combinations skin and possibly even dry skin for the summers because it's just so nice it like seeps into the skin without feeling oily you know if you have oily skin you just don't want that feeling of like stickiness I've tried a bunch of the Versed skincare products like their vitamin C the headband that you guys always ask us about this one is actually from Burst. Yes, secret's out, guys. It's not really a secret, but they also don't sell it anymore, so we're really sorry about that. <laughs> so the next reason why your pores might be showing to be getting really huge is potentially because of your cleansing routine. We've talked to, you know, Glow Recipes, Sarah and Christine. We talked to Leah from Crave. We talked to Alicia from Peach and Lily, and all of them stand by cleansing as one of the most important skincare steps of the entire routine because if you think about it you're getting away all the grime and what's filled in our pores it's grime right it's a mixture of dirt oil pollution and bacteria from the day so especially at night it's so important and pivotal to really deep clean if you guys are like me you'll love the double cleansing method but in saying that not everyone has to do double cleansing i think if you've just been at home you can just go into your favorite cleanser work that in there for about 60 seconds and wash it off but if you do have any sort of like heavy duty sunscreen or you've worn makeup then we definitely suggest doing a double cleanse which is using a cleanse balm or cleansing oil following up with your cleanser so it's like generally allowing that crusty layer to get loosened to get washed away so that everything that we put on top will be able to sink in and work its magic so make sure you're cleansing properly so the next reason why our pores might be looking a little huge is because maybe we're not exfoliating enough or in the right way so exfoliation as a topic is just huge right there's so many different products so many different ways that we can do it and it really does depend on your skin type, your skin condition at that point in time because our skin does change day by day, week by week. One way that I read my skin is if it's, I can see that it's a little crusty, if I see that it's a little dull and it feels textured, that's when I know I need to do some form of chemical exfoliation. And with chemical exfoliants, AHAs are water soluble and BHA is oil soluble. BHA can seep deeper into the pores into the sebaceous filaments and the sebum to break down any acne causing bacteria as well as the excess oils and kind of like balance that back out whereas AHAs aren't able to seep into the oil like mortar part of the skin and it will help just to gently resurface away dead skin so now let's jump into ingredients that personally I found can really help in balancing out and degunking without force and that's what the ingredients are supposed to do right it's going to gently slough away dead skin purify the skin and reveal healthier more plump and untextured skin so firstly let's go into our AHAs BHAs and PHAs so the first is this one the drunk elephant 12% AHA BHA blend so this one is a night serum so the most important thing to keep note of when first dabbling into this is just to like read the instructions really well so that you're really making the most of the product without giving yourself a chemical burn because that can happen. So this is one that I got ages ago. I haven't used it for a while now because it is very effective when you use it. Probably like two to three times a week 
if you do feel that it's like textured if you're breaking out and it's a clear gel that you put on as a serum so I haven't used this one in a while because I do feel like my skin hasn't been that congested that I want to use this as a night treatment but when I did use it was when I was like completely breaking out and it really did help to even out the skin bring it back to a balanced place but you just have to make sure to not pair it with another chemical exfoliating toner because it'll singe the skin and completely dry it out and give you more troubles than you probably started with. Now these three are formulated with AHA, BHA and PHA. So PHA is similar to the AHAs but it's got a larger molecular size meaning that it won't travel as deep and as further down into the skin and so if you're looking for an alternative maybe you have more sensitive skin then you'll look for something with PHA. So the glow recipe watermelon toner, the PHA and BHA, and they specifically formulated this one for people who wanted the effects of chemical exfoliating, but they can't take maybe the potency of it. So this is designed to be used every day. And instead of water as the main ingredient, there's cactus water, which they flew over from Mexico <laughs> to formulate all the way in Korea. And it's got this beautiful, like bouncy consistency. So you wouldn't use this as a toner just to like take away grime, excess grime after cleansing this is a treatment toner it has hyaluronic acid so it's very hydrating as well and I've been enjoying this thoroughly I feel like you would use this on days where you just want to keep the skin in a nice condition and prevent future breakout so this one is really really great and then options for you guys who want HABHAB PHA is the Sun By Me line. So we talked about this a really long time ago in our like first review of it. So it's got all three formulated in there to really help with decongesting and empty, not emptying out, you can't really empty your pores, but you know what I mean, like scraping out the gunk over time. But the great thing is this has also got tea tree as well as centella. So tea tree is antimicrobial, antibacterial, great for oily skin and acne prone skin. And I also feel like this has like lightening effects because it is resurfacing the skin in a very gentle way so I would say if you want something a little bit more potent you can try this oil serum you have to shake it and the oil will kind of like mix in with the water part so it's actually very hydrating I wouldn't say you have to use all three together that might be a little bit over drying but yeah I really love the serum because it does give that like moisturizing effect and the great thing is this one also has nice cinnamon which is my favorite ingredient and then of course we have Crave Beauty the Kayla Luya which is a skin resurfacing AHA toner which is a treatment toner that you would only use one to three times a week so this also has kale spinach hyaluronic acid panthenol which is vitamin b5 and it has glycolic acid with all of these if you haven't used it like a lot you will feel a sense of tingling and it should just tingle for a moment momentarily tingle and then over time you'll get used to it so we have a whole like chemical exfoliating video if you want to watch how to really incorporate that in but just make sure you start slow and you start low and then just two other options for an affordable one is the pixie glow tonic 5% glycolic acid so this one has I believe like 12 percent these ones are all a little higher whereas this one is five percent it's a daily one it's alcohol free and it's quite easy as like a beginner or if you're introducing it into your routine and then this one from wish trend i actually really love it's the mandelic acid five percent skin water prep so this one you can definitely feel even for me i can feel it when i pat it on my skin after cleansing that especially in the areas where i'm breaking out it will tingle a little bit more mandelic acid is another type of AJ and this is 5%. I don't feel that it's over drying whatsoever because it's also got centella as well as licorice root extract so it's also very brightening. So you can see like these will all help with pores but are also brightening because it's resurfacing the skin. Now going on to BHAs, something that if you guys are acne prone, oily, you will know a lot about. This one is a cult favorite. I like suggested to everyone. I gave it to my mom, I gave it to my friends and it really helps with acne prone skin. It's the Paula's Choice 2% BHA liquid exfoliant. So you can actually use this every day depending on like what you need it for. I don't think you even need to put it all over the face. You can just like in areas that you feel are a little bit more turbulent. So it really helps to unclog and unstick sticky large 
pores as well as help to fight acne causing bacteria. I think I gave this to one of our team members who also had like acne on the skin and it completely resolved it like a dream. So that was like amazing and that was ever since she started working for Beauty Within. So there you go, Paula's choice. <laughs> Another salicylic acid product I have that I love is the Aesop Into Minds Facial Cleanser. So this one has, you know, that typical like essential oil kind of herbal smell. It's also got witch hazel, sage leaf, and the salicylic acid. This one is kind of like a light lather to the skin. I don't like the fact that it doesn't have a pump because then you just end up kind of like wasting a lot of product potentially, but I like the aroma of this. It feels like you're in a spa. It really does clean the face, but I would only suggest this for people with like oily combination. Otherwise it could be a little bit too drying. But yes, there's this one. Another ingredient that can really help with large filled pores and even acne is retinol, so vitamin A. So actually vitamin A back in the day was first discovered to help with acne before it came out as an anti-wrinkle. That was kind of something that they found out along the way. Oh, it plumps the skin and it helps with collagen production. If you're facing large pores, I wouldn't jump straight into retinols. Only if you have large pores and acne do I feel like retinol is something you should definitely try. And they come in all different forms, all different formulations and percentages, much like the chemical exfoliants. But these are my favorite. This is one that I used to use the Paula's Choice 1% Retinol Booster, Vitamin A and Licorice. I would say this is probably the most potent forms because even though it sounds like a little 1%, it's a lot. It's a dang lot. And I would peel around the nose, so you just have to make sure that you're moisturizing a lot. But the great thing with these boosters is that you can add it into your serum, you can add it into your moisturizer, like you can create your own buffer. But with all of these, I would say use it at night. You can use it in the morning, but the chances of you getting photosensitivity with UV rays is quite high, especially if you're outside. So I just feel like it's unnecessary. So that's the Paula's Choice 1%. I would recommend this to people who are already kind of like pros at using retinol and you know you can take it. If you're a little bit newer, I would suggest going in with a um, retinol that's formulated into a moisturizer because it has other ingredients that work together with the retinol and could be micro encapsulated meaning there's a slower delivery of it overnight, which means it's less irritating, which means it's less drying. So the ones that we've really been loving are the Naturium ones. There's a retinol cream, 2.5%, but it's also got hyaluronic acid, antioxidants, as well as vitamin E. And this one is very similar to the Obagi Retinol Retexturizing Cream. Both of them, I think, are micro-encapsulated with retinol, but this one glides over the face like a dream. It is so hydrating, so moisturizing, and it's also got the natural form Bacuchiol, so it helps with fine lines, wrinkles, controlling and constricting sebum production in the pores, and that's how it works for oily, acne-prone skin. So I absolutely love this one. So with the creams, you can use it every other night to begin with, and then when your skin adjusts and you feel like there's, you know, there's nothing crazy going on, then you can use it every night. So I love these two. I've talked about this one before, but this is my new favorite. And with retinols, there's also oil forms, which is an even, to me, like an even safer way to use it because by the time you use an oil, you already created this like entire buffer on your skin. So it's going to be way less irritating. There's the Ordinary Grand Active Retinoid 2% in Squalane. It's got squalane oil. Squalane is something that's naturally present in our sebum. There's a 5% as well, so I would say if you want to try it out, try the 2% first. And I feel like this is something you can use every day, depending on how your face is feeling. In the summer, I definitely don't use oils because it's already oily. But if you have dry and parched and dehydrated skin, as well as acne, this could be your go-to. And then Naturium also has their retinoid plus with squalane and metafoam seed oil. So it's also got the squalane oil, very calming, very soothing, acting as the emollient in the like later stages of your skincare routine. It's a really fast absorbing oil that personally gives no irritation whatsoever. So if you want to try retinols and you don't have an oil, maybe the oil is the way to go. Next ingredient! <laughs> Going crazy here, okay, is vitamin B3, niacinamide. So we 
eat this in our foods, in our leafy greens, our cruciferous vegetables. It's in a lot of different foods, but when we apply it to the skin topically, this is like one of those all-star ingredients that can help with large pores, evening out and rebalancing skin tone, texture. But what I love is that you can use it every day. So with chemical exfoliants and retinols, you can't necessarily use them every day, depending on, you know, the type of product. But with niacinamide, it works with most skin types, most skin conditions. And because it's at a higher pH level, it doesn't cause much of the sensitivities like things like retinol or vitamin C. So there are a ton ton of different products that you can look into. We've got two niacinamide videos, so I'm going to link that below. I'm not really going to go into it. So this is probably the most affordable of them all. It's the niacinamide brightening toner, but it's actually formulated with such great ingredients like licorice root extract, as well as arbutin and vitamin C. So all in all, this is probably like a really brightening and skin evening out toner and you get a lot of it and you can use it day and night just remember anything in the morning that you use with a sunscreen look at that so this is really really awesome we have a whole video about good molecules entire line if you're interested and i really love this one and then you'll see them throughout serums because serums are like little vials of active potent ingredients formulated to really help with specific things right i think if you're starting out and you're looking for something also affordable you can look into the ordinary which is you know the cult favorite niacinamide 10 percent and zinc so zinc is really great if you're battling breakouts as well as large pores and this one under ten dollars it's a little bit you know goopy but it's not sticky that one's kind of a no fail except some people have said that they do react to the zinc and so if you find that happens don't use that one you can look for a different formulation for example you've used this one and you love it and you want something a little bit more it's like a step up the naturium has the niacinamide serum 12 percent and zinc 2 percent so it basically ups it by one to two percentages and it's also got vitamin e so it's quite nourishing hydrating as well as helping to balance out the pores on a daily basis and then this is the 10%. So it's actually been stated that niacinamide used between 10 and 20% is very effective for helping with pores. This one has vitamin B3 as well as vitamin B5 panthenol, which is more of a like a nourishing hydrating ingredient, whereas the vitamin B3, which is niacinamide, will help with your pores. So this is another booster form, meaning it can be used in like another serum or in a toner or even adding a few drops into your moisturizer. So you just get a little bit more flexibility with this. As you can see, I love it. I've gone through like four of these, but if you're done with that and you want to step up, this is the 20% niacinamide treatment. So as you can see, this is a treatment. So you should use it after your toner serum, add a few drops of this onto the skin, spread it out, and then use a moisturizer. So you can use it with vitamin A, which is the retinols, and they can actually help to boost hydration to help offset any irritation and restore the elasticity and just the balance of your skin. So that's why that is really great. Okay, so last, I guess, ingredient. Is it even an ingredient? I don't know, but it's clay masks. So you can kind of think of it as like clay acting as a magnet to draw out impurities, absorb oil, and clay masks do that really well because that's what it does, right? Sometimes when we add the clay mask onto the face, you can literally see your pores being like vacuumed out. And so I have these, which are my absolute ride or dies, go to any time that like I see it's very oily, filled and plump. So it all kind of comes down to even like the type of clay, there's different clays, kaolin, white clay, montmorillonite, there's a ton of them. They all vary in the levels that they can actually attract and absorb the sebum in your skin, right? So if you have drier skin, I wouldn't say to use montmorillonite clay because it is some harsh stuff, like very attractive to the oil and the pores and because you're already starting out with less oil that's probably something that's going to further dry out your skin and probably even cause you to break out the most affordable option is the aztec clay that you actually mix with water or you mix with apple cider vinegar and it's like a science experiment in itself because it bubbles away and you shouldn't use it with stainless steel or metals you want to mix it with like wood or ceramics it affects the process in which the ingredients like work together so you would mix that up apply it to the face and your skin actually like 
tightens up. It's like Botox in a way. And then you wash that off. It completely helps to degunk areas where it's like really filled. So the next kind of like in terms of potency is the Glam Glow. So this is the Super Mud Clearing Treatment. Basically you put it on, you leave it there, and when it dries you see all the oil that's been like sucked out. It's very satisfying. It's kind of like a self-care mask. And then there's also the Youth Mud which is a little bit, to me, less tightening, but also works to help degunk the pores. And it's a little bit more fragrance, which is something that, I don't know, it's not bad, but it's definitely there, and it uses kaolin clay, which is like a type of white clay. Next is my favorite. If you're looking for like, even though it's a clay mask, it's hydrating in a weird way, I would say these two are my absolute favorites. First is the Fresh Umbrian Clay Purifying Mask that deeply cleanses and purifies. So with these clay masks, I would use them once a week. You know, you can use your sheet mask throughout the week. You can use your chemical exfoliants throughout the week. But I really love doing this kind of like as a self-care thing on the weekend. So this one, I think it even has like oil in it. Compared to the Glam Glow, it doesn't dry in a way that like leaves your face feeling dry. After you wash this off, it just feels really nice and smoothed. So that's this one here and people with dry skin can also use it because it is so luxurious. And then this one from Peach and Lily is the Pore Proof Perfecting Clay Mask to help purify and unclog pores. It's got kaolin clay, which is a great type of clay for all skin types, and also wild cherry. So this one in terms of consistency is a little bit more firm, but when you like work it into the skin, it's nice and soft and really helps to purify. Another soft kaolin clay mask is the one from The Body Shop. It's their Tea Tree Skin Clearing Clay Mask. So Rowena gave this to me and I loved it so much. I've used like almost all of it down to the end of the pot, honey pot, tea tree pot. So this one has tea tree oil and it's not irritating. I love the scent of it. Tea tree is antibacterial, antimicrobial. So it's also good for you guys with acne prone skin. So all of those I really love, but they are a little on the pricier side. If you are to buy one, I would say the fresh, the peach and lily and the tea tree are my favorite. Um, and then if you really want to like get away the gunk, then I would say this Glam Glow Clearing. But if you want something that's affordable but also has salicylic acid in it, get this baby. It's the Ordinary Salicylic Acid 2% Mask for Blemish Prone Skin. Even though it says it's for blemish prone, it can really help with pores as well because BHA is oil soluble, right? So it can really help to break down the gunk in the pores. And this also has squalane in the mask. So even though it's a clean mask, it's actually very like almost nourishing after you wash it off the face. It doesn't leave it completely stripped of all its oils and it leaves a like a nice soft feeling. It's like this charcoal black mask that you just leave on and it's not irritating or anything like that. And this is great also like once or twice a week just to clarify. Okay, so now to end, I wanna mention something about witch hazel. So witch hazel is a natural astringent. If you guys have seen, you know, the Veya's witch hazel, it's like one of the most bought Amazon skincare products ever. I actually use that first as a product and then I broke out in a rash from it because of the astringent properties. Like when you go ham on witch hazel, it's potentially very irritating because it's not a toner in which it hydrates, it's actually stripping away the oils. So if you want something to help balance out your skin, you'll see witch hazel formulated in those types of ingredients. For example, recently I've used the Neogen Porefine Serum. I actually really like this. And so when it's formulated with other things, with like hydrating ingredients, it can work a treat to rebalance, especially combo oily skin. But if it's like a high percentage of witch hazel, like Dothea's, it can cause problems, right? So it really does depend on the formulation and how it works with your skin. They have two. I'm kind of like on the fence with the toner. I think this is a really great balancing one, but only if you have oily skin. I think if you have really oily skin, especially around the T-zone, this could be really great to help handle those situations. And it's very, very lightweight. So I wouldn't say it's like hydrating even though it's like water when you apply it to the skin it kind of just evaporates because of the like witch hazel oil balancing properties so in terms of like being an astringent I feel like this is definitely great to rebalance so I would recommend that for like really oily skin girls but what I do really love is their porifine serum oh my gosh so this is like a gel moisturizer but in a serum form it's like a bubble when you put it on and it just completely melts 
melts into water and it is so hydrating. It's very calming. It's very soothing. It's like almost refreshing when you put it on and it's so lightweight. So I would like, oh my God, I'm like shook from this consistency. It is so nice. In terms of pore refining, I don't know yet because I've only really used it over the course of like three days, but I think this is going to be a staple in the routine, especially for the hotter months when you want something lightweight, when you want it refreshing and also like to control the production of oils coming from your skin. I think this is so good. Oh my God. All of you guys with oily skin, make sure you check this out. Whoa, I love it. And that concludes our epic pore video. So basically went through the main reasons why we have pores, how they get congested and gunkified and, you know, swollen on the face. And then all the, all my favorite ingredients to really help with that. If you guys have any questions, leave it below. We have videos talking about each specific ingredient. So there's no lack of information there. Let us know what you guys are enjoying. And if you want to see any particular topics in the comments, that is where we will be and we'll see you in the next one. Bye! Spirit fingers!